drama, storytelling, After Effects, it's time to tell your visual story. If you can't tell, I just love motion graphics that have some grit to them. And yes, producing this style of animated videos is so easy to do. So if you're ready to create some drama, let's get started. I think I'm trying to go for a Zack Snyder look or to pay homage to that one of Game of Thrones episode with this very dark sequence. But to illustrate my point, contrast easily helps make a very dramatic mood but it's up to you if you want a dark scene or something more vibrant. And real quick, our Cyber Monday sale is now in full swing and all of our template packs are undergoing their largest price cuts. So if you want to save time and produce great work, be sure to check out everything below. And we also have a large free template pack, so be sure to at least get your hands on that. All right, to start off, the first thing you need to do is create your background with a solid layer, which I'll make very dark gray. The next object you need is landscaping so you have a reference point for all your objects. So we'll use the rectangle tool to draw out the ground. And this needs to be a darker gray than the background as we're creating a nighttime campfire roast some marshmallows type scene. Once you have your background and landscape ready, I would next add in your main object, which in this case will be a silhouette character. Now, I'm not much of an illustrator, as you might be able to tell, but you can get illustrated assets like this when you search for free vectors. Typically, you'll get a .eps or .ai file, which can be opened in Adobe Illustrator. All you need to do in Illustrator is delete the objects that you don't want, uh, but you might need to ungroup the objects as the layers might be like stuck together. But when you're done, go ahead and save it. And this will allow you to import it in After Effects as a vector footage file. Now with our character in the scene, you can tick this teeny tiny cog icon and this will allow you to scale the object indefinitely without it pixelating. It's beautiful, right? Th you know, this feature is really what got me into vector motion graphics and the reason why I don't go outside much. Please send help. Okay, with the concept of getting illustrated graphics, I'll also import some vector trees and place them around the scene to insert some legitimate details, which is vital for building out your world. I'm also going to use the generate fill effect on my vector objects to match it with the color of the landscape, which will make for an easy silhouette scene and will reveal my dark intentions. Wait, <laughs> oops. All right, now we need to talk about lighting. Without lighting, we cannot justify contrast. So I'll add in some fire in the middle of the shot, which is a story element in this case, but is also used to separate the character from the background. Now, the element I'm using here is from our GFX pack. Unfortunately, this would require another tutorial to make a fire element this detailed. So you can get this fire asset for free with a provided project. But I'll also quickly show how to create simple fire as the concepts are still relevant to this video. So create a white shape that looks like a Hershey kiss using the pen tool. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you can add the wave warp effect from distort and increase the wave speed to around six. Then duplicate the shape layer scale it up and change the color to gray or orange if you're working with color. Now, this is the important part. Whether you're working with fire or not, uh, with the white shape, go ahead and add the glow effect from stylize and increase the glow radius, duplicate the effect and increase the glow radius even more this time until you get this glow haze. Now that we have our primary light motivation for the rest of the scene and the glow effect on a white asset, this will all stand out in a few moments when we finally stylize this. All right, so to make this scene come to life, we have to create depth and camera movement. So make everything a 3D layer and boom, we got boxes. To demonstrate how to create depth, take the tree layers, for example, adjust their Z position so that they're closer to us. So now our trees and the hero silhouette are not on the same plane anymore. Going back to high school geometry, not the airport. Taking this concept even further, we can duplicate the trees and push them back into Z space. So now that they're behind the fire and we can also take that fire and push it back by a touch as well in Z space so that our character is not standing in it or else you have to write a character that is you know, immune to fire. So to show off this depth, go ahead and create a camera and the 50 millimeter preset is fine. Straight away, Add keyframes for point of interest and position. Then by using the dolly towards cursor tool here at the top, you can zoom out of your scene like so, 
and this will give you that dolly zoom effect. You may notice when we're zoomed out of the scene that we have so much open space right over here. This is where you could continue to duplicate objects. In my case, I'll take the trees and adjust the Z position of each object to build out an expanded you know, scene. So with this editing time lapse out of the way, our forest is complete, much better. Now, the beauty of a camera allows you to easily enable depth of field. And when you increase the aperture, we will blur out our scene when the camera is pulled back. And as the camera moves in closer, the scene will be in focus. So by creating depth, you get to experience the full environment and stylize the scene with that beautiful blur. Though, let's take the style one step further by creating an adjustment layer. Add the noise effect from noise and grain and set the amount to say 6%. Uncheck use color noise because I'm not a fan. Then add posterize from stylize. Go ahead and experiment with this effect. Some may like this, some may not, but I'll try a value of 14 this time around. And of course, be sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers. And now you have a very beautiful shot. And you may also take this opportunity to animate any sort of object with the puppet pin tool to add a little bit more life to your project. For these other compositions, the principles are fairly the same, though you may need a different character model and use new objects, but the intention is to create depth and use the camera to pop things out of focus. For this shot in particular, I place a fire just outside the composition because this is a close shot, but it's still good to have a point of reference to where the fire is at. And when you're creating matching compositions, you can literally copy and paste elements over and this will save you some time and allow you to have matching shots. Even for different types of compositions like this one, the same principles apply. As the quote goes, a work is never finished, it's merely abandoned. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.